Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating a rational expression. I guess we could also call this an algebraic expression. We're given xy plus xz plus yz, which is equal to zero, and we're supposed to evaluate x plus y over z plus x plus z over y plus y plus z over x. Notice that the variables alternate, so if you have x and y in the numerator, then you have the third one in the denominator. So kind of switch around like that. Anyways, uh, we have this type of expression, so based on the given equation, we're going to evaluate the second one, which means we're supposed to get a constant value, no matter what x, y, z values are, as long as they satisfy the first equation and don't make the second expression undefined, because what happens is if you pick x equals y equals 0, you're going to run into huge problems. So that's why we need to make sure that x, y, z are never 0. Other than that, you should be OK. And if you pick something so that x and y are opposites, that's probably going to help. Like you can pick x equals 1, y equals negative 1, so on and so forth. So that'll probably be our first method since I already talked about it. <laughs> There's no, it's not a secret anymore. Let's go ahead and just see how that plays out. Actually, that was my second method, so let's start with the second method then. Okay, great. So second method is basically substitution. So I want to satisfy this equation, find x, y, z values that satisfy this equation, and so I can plug those into my second expression, which I'm trying to evaluate, right? Great, so what would you think? I would probably start with x equals 1 and y equals negative 1. That automatically implies the value of z. Let's find out. You could find it a couple of different ways. For example, just plug it in. If x is 1 and y is negative 1, their product is going to be negative 1. x is 1, so this is going to be z. And y is negative 1, that's going to be a minus z. Uh-oh, we run into a problem. So that means x and y are cannot be opposites, which is true for all pairs. So I guess we should pick different values. So this is not going to work. At least we saw, okay, that causes problems. Okay. Anyways, let's go ahead and check this out. And now we're going to go ahead and use different things. How about this? I want to use x equals 2 and y equals 1. That's okay. I'll pick two values. Hopefully that'll prevent problems. If that's the case, uh, x, y is going to be 2, x is going to be 2z, and y, z is going to be just z equals 0. From here we get 3, z equals negative 2, and z equals negative 2 thirds. Awesome. So I got my values. Now what I can do is plug those in. If I pick 2 and negative 1, would it be a little better? I'm not sure. It looks like it's going to be a little better, but, you know, we can just use these. No big deal. x plus y over z, x plus y over z, and then x plus z. You know what? I think fractions are going to be really problematic. So let's go ahead and, uh oh, I don't know what is going on with this eraser. OK, so let's go ahead and use a negative value for y. I'm hoping that it is going to give me something nicer. OK, if x, if x equals 1, I mean x equals 2 and y equals negative 1, we get negative 2 plus 2z minus z. Yes, I think this will do the trick because we get a 1z from here and that means z is equal to 2. Beautiful. So x and z are equal, which is nice. Now we're going to have x plus y, x plus y, which is 1, over z, which is 2. And then we're going to have x plus z, which is 4, divided by y, which is negative 1. And then y plus z, which is 1, divided by x, x is 2. Great. This gives me 1 half minus 4 plus 1 half, obviously 1 half plus 1 half is 1, 1 minus 4 is negative 3. So hopefully the answer is negative 3 and you can check it with a different combination of values. Of course, don't use anything like y equals 2 and x equals negative 1 because that will probably result in something similar. Great, so at least we got a nice combo and you can try different options, but this is by no means a rigorous solution because we're only testing values. But if you're taking a multiple choice test and you need to get to the answer really quickly, you can definitely, definitely use this type of method, which is very appropriate for that scenario. But if you have to, it's like a written exam where you have to explain your steps and show your work and so on and so forth. You need something better than that, which is called the first method. Okay, let's talk about the first method, which is the general method. Okay. 
So the first method is basically going to depend on using the given expression to evaluate the second one, right? So how do we get from this one to the other? And let's go ahead and see how we can do it. And again, uh, these two methods are not the only ones. I believe there's a third method. And if we have some time left towards the end, maybe I can briefly talk about it. Just give you some uh, starters okay, or pointers. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to separate this expression into pieces like x over z, y over z, x over y, plus z over y, plus y plus z over x. And oops, I was supposed to separate them. <laughs> And that's going to look like y over x plus z over x. Okay, we should have six terms. Good. Now, the reason why I split it up like this is because I want to put together two terms that have the same numerator. Not the same denominator, but the same numerator. And you'll see why in a little bit. So let's go ahead and pair these two up. And then I'm going to go ahead and pair up this with this because they have the same numerator. And then finally, I'm trying to use different shapes, so kind of like shape coded, and these two things, okay? If you put those two together, like for example, x over z plus x over y, and then y over z plus y over x, and finally, z over y plus z over x, great. Let's go ahead and kind of treat each pair separately, like this and like that, instead of making a common denominator, which we could also make, I don't know if that's going to help. It's probably be, that could probably be one of the methods. Anyways, there's a lot of ways to do this. <laughs> it's unbelievable. So here, what happens is we have an x. Uh, so you can kind of take the x out and you're going to have y plus c here and then yz here. Make sense? Take the y out. You're going to have z plus x or x plus z. I guess it's probably better to write it that way. Oops. x plus c and then xz and then z out, and then x plus y over xy. Awesome. And then what do you do next? Good question. We kind of need to distribute because that's going to give us xy plus xz over yz, and then xy plus yz over xz, and then finally xz plus yz over xy. Now here's the beautiful part. If you consider the given expression, this one, right? Let's go ahead and rewrite it. We have xy plus xz plus yz equals zero. This gives us a lot of good things, three good things. One of them, number one, is if you isolate these two, xy plus xz would be negative yz. Second, if you isolate xy plus yz, that'll be negative xz, and third, if you isolate xz plus yz, then you'll get negative xy. You get it? So now we can go ahead and replace this with negative yz, this with negative xz, and this with negative xy. And it's just beautiful because this gives you, let me clean this area so I can work it out. That should give you negative yz over yz plus negative xz over xz plus negative xy over xy and that'll give you negative 1 plus negative 1 plus negative 1 which is negative 3 which is what we found earlier with the second method second method first first method second right okay quickly talk about uh, a third approach here i think this will work i'm not exactly sure i haven't checked it but you can go ahead and check it out I'm thinking about maybe isolating one of the variables and solving for it. For example, we can maybe just factor out a z here and write it as x plus y, and that is equal to negative x, y, and from here z can be written as negative x, y over x plus y. And then we could possibly, possibly use this in the original expression if you replace all occurrences of z with this. Hopefully that'll give you something. For example, whenever you have something like x plus y over z, z will be replaced with this so that would be i'm not exactly sure if that's going to turn out to be a nice thing but you should be getting something like this and then eventually you might end up uh, making a common denominator that's also something else you can do like maybe a fourth method uh, you can kind of take start here make a common denominator and then see where that takes you and this 
brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.